Okay, you know what I have found to be very interesting? There's one main problem that I've run into as an advertiser and someone who operates in the e-commerce space, a little bit drop stream, we've moved drastically outside of that, but Facebook and TikTok ads, I'd be doing about $200 million a year right now, probably minimum, in terms of gross sales volume, if it weren't for one little problem that I can't seem to overcome, I don't think you can overcome, it's just like one little barrier that really shouldn't be an issue, and it causes me to have a lot of setbacks. So I'm gonna go through in this video um, a little bit about what happened in the behind the scenes of actually scaling a new brand. Using Facebook, it wasn't anything crazy, just like aggressive scaling methods, and scaling to a million dollars a day in one ad account, literally just one ad account that was spending like, and got up to like 40,000 a day at the most, had access to more than that spend. It was doing 100 plus thousand a day in gross revenue, and we got up to a million dollars in the first 10 days. So I want to talk about that and kind of run you through a little bit more of like the back end and what happened because it's really interesting what all that happened and it looked just like this. I was in the basement of my house in Arizona. I keep the AC cranked. I have a hoodie on. I'm sitting there. I had like shut everything else down. This is when I was going like full ghost just on e-commerce. Didn't post anything on social media for like three to six months but I had my LED lights. I had music blasting. I had a speaker that was much much bigger than this one that I use here in my home in Puerto Rico. And that was it. I would just sit there for 14 hours a day and chill. Like that was my element because I'm a little bit of an introvert. So that was what it looked like. But this is what the setup here in Puerto Rico looks like at the standing desk there, the uh, the little curved monitor. And yeah, this is the uh, the spot if you haven't seen it. So not a bad place. Been here for almost a year and uh, it's been super solid. So. Uh, first of all, it's really late. It's about 1 a.m. and normally I'm not up this late, but we've had a lot of stuff going on with the new store. So getting that transition over to a brand with a ton of new content that's going on. So then not only managing and like overseeing the directing and direction of those ads, but also then obviously integrating those right into the ad platform. I'm doing all that stuff myself. So getting things rolling, nonetheless, I'll talk about some big sales volume and a bunch of cool stuff. I gotta go to bed first, adios. Well, you remember the first million dollars in like 10 days? Yeah, that was insane. No, I thought it was doable either. <laughs> Scaling Facebook ads real quick, my boy. That was but fun. not only was it a million dollars in 10 days, we're managing 30 other stores doing hundreds of grand a month. <laughs> How was that? Yeah, but that was like the big one, you know? It was like one thing scaling to like a different level on Facebook. That was, that was fun, dude. In the basement, the air conditioning cranked. Hoodies on. Everybody's just got like two big monitors, like 40, 45 inches. <laughs> I remember even we even moved the refrigerator and microwave downstairs so we didn't have to leave the basement to go <laughs> That was the best. Had a whole other refrigerator down there with the meal prep. What was the guy who would bring all the food? The what was his name? Uh, his name was Andrew. The guy that brought us meal prep. Dude, that was great. Hundred bucks a week for good food. That was awesome. <laughs> Twenty one meals, three meals a day for hundred bucks, bro. You could not beat. Yeah, then you don't have to think about it. Andrew is dope. We got we got to get hit him back up. That that was awesome. Uh, Hell yeah. Nah, bro. We. All the cars we had, we, we parked them things, sit some down to get built because we didn't want any distractions. We just locked in and did it. That was funny. I never thought with like a 10 car garage or a nine car garage at the house that we'd overflow it. <laughs> Dude, we had them lined up in the driveway. We had all the things people wanted to do, but we still worked. Well, there's nothing else to do, bro. Running up Facebook ads is, is more fun than grabbing a, a Chipotle burrito in the Lambo. Like that's enjoyable too, but I mean, come on. You know? The cool thing was, is like how our schedules went though. Like, because you're more of a morning person, you work till night, then you would want to go to sleep. But then we would take over midday, work through the night. So it was like a 24 hour revolving ship of these things. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Always like, we'd have new ideas and it'd be like, boom, three new stores today, two new stores tomorrow, and just like pumped into the system. That was what's up. Yeah. And we would just write on the whiteboard, like, kind of like a regular job. Like, like when you would be leaving one to bed, hey, this needs to be done this night, this needs to be done tonight, this needs to be done tonight. And then, we would all do it and then we'd write our notes. This was done, this needs to be done. And like, we would just switch, switch off. Made things easy and workflow like super well. That's systematic efficiencies, my man. That was great. That was the first time like implementing systems, like having like five whiteboards like that all over the place, just surrounding you like eight foot whiteboards and just crazy. That was so fun. I, I enjoyed that. Yeah, the, thing, the crazy thing is like we ran, we, we were, you know, millions and millions of dollars a month. One million on just one store. And we managed it between like three people and like everyone thinks they need these systems in place so like all these people to do it we were just three guys in a basement yeah that's all it takes people doing the right things man well that's what's up what you up to now what, where are you going i'm actually gonna go back to some stairs and work i'm just trying to look for some food i'm hungry 
Got to head up Andrew, get the meal prep. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, I'm in the middle of moving, so like, I don't want to overload my fridge and move it, but for sure next week. Facts. All right, got a great breakfast going, and I wanted to point something out. You know when something happens, it's like not a good thing, and you just confront it with humor? You're like, oh, dude, you should have seen it, man. Like, I was just on my phone, it was stupid, and I rear-ended this guy, like, it was totally my fault. Like, you know, you, you take that approach. That's kind of what happened here, except it sucks, because this was doing three and on his track for like $4 million a month, that's 50 plus million a year. I mean, that's a very, very large individual e-commerce business. And it crashed and failed for one reason. We'll give that to you here in a second. And it was such a dumb thing that now like can't happen again because there was a lot of money coming in, obviously, right? And there was not the craziest margin, but there was a lot of profit too. And I should have implemented this one piece. And that was a fail safe system with checking the orders. So I made the mistake, 100% my fault, even though it was someone else who screwed me over, it's my company. And this was, you saw my, me and my buddy talking, that's my friend Corey. Um, the store that in question with the million dollars in 10 days was mine. That's my main brand, nobody else was touching that. We were working on a ton of other stores doing crazy stuff. Anyways, it was my fault because I didn't have someone double checking the orders. I had been working with a supplier for about a year and a half and ultimately they gypped me. They screwed me over just out of 4,100 orders. Now the store was doing almost 3,000 orders a day. So 4,100 orders is kind of a blip in the radar and fake tracking got sent, like some issues. Anyways, that pushed everything over the threshold. That pushed the merchant chargeback rate to like a fraction above 1%. It also pushed the feedback score down on Facebook. So that caused the ad account to go down and merchant issues to have problems, which also jacked up the rates on everything else for the merchant processing. So it's like one stupid thing that was totally my fault and again, that's why suppliers are really crucial. And if you want a private supplier, um, I mean, here's what like a real supplier looks like. Who can, you know, I'll put a video here, like what it looks like inside a, a processing uh, area where they're actually shipping out orders, having inventory, storing it, organizing, labeling, packaging, all that stuff. Uh, I'll put the contact info for one below or a link so you can like actually start reaching out to some people. Because when I was starting, there, there was no option. It was like either AliExpress or you invest 200 grand in the inventory. Now, I didn't have 200 grand. So I don't know where you're starting from, but even in my opinion, it doesn't make sense to go spend 200 grand because you don't know if that product's working yet. So for me, it was just, I always want to get in touch with more people. I've gone to Guangzhou, China multiple times to meet with suppliers, California, there's a bunch out of Marietta and Temecula um, outside of the greater Los Angeles area. So just some different things. And so meeting people, I always try to get in touch with as many private suppliers as I can and get quotes. There is nothing holding you back from getting quotes from a hundred different suppliers. It's always good to know that. And others, you'll want to shop around. It's like, you know, with real estate or whatever, with, with anything, you want to shop around, see what's the best deal. But also there's other variables, the best shipping times, who has the best track record, and then always trust, but verify. That was a really stupid mistake that I made. And it was that one thing. I'll talk more about the systems in this video that like led to the million in 10 days that so you can go easily duplicate that. But at the same time, it was one stupid little piece. And if one piece falls, I mean, it can just become a domino effect. And so that's ultimately what took it down. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of laughable looking back. It was a great learning experience. Um, a lot of money flowing in and out. I also got, you know, just off that one store in a very short period of time, millions and millions and millions of Amex points over like two months just from ad spend on it. So there's other things in play when the credit card points aren't really my concern, but at the same time, it was just one little dumb mistake and uh, you know, my fault. So with that being said, I'm gonna eat my breakfast, little eggs and potatoes, gotta grab a piece of fruit and uh, I'm off to the gym here in about 30 minutes. All right, I am always the one who's gonna shoot straight with you and like these videos that I make are just meant to document stuff, show the collection of, of successes as well as many, many failures that have taken place. And I learned a good lesson here that I will not ever let happen again inside the e-commerce business. I definitely thankfully have not made this mistake in other companies as well, but I'm an aggressive person when it comes to growth. So for an example, like when I got into YouTube, started making a couple videos with friends, screwing around, showing the business stuff when I was just running an e-commerce store and that was it. So a little first dog store that did a couple million bucks in revenue. Well, <laughs> I started enjoying it. And then I started realizing I can meet more people from it. And then I started doing more and more. I'm like, okay, this is cool. And so I just posted every single day for like 650 days, right? A surplus abundance. Was that the best move for ultimate growth? Maybe, maybe not. Who knows what the YouTube algorithm likes. I don't really care too much about the views. However, I realized that in other aspects of the business, the, the growth is great. Scaling is fine. Front end loaded scaling, like more customers, more business, more front end, right? is great, but it has to be matched at a pace where your back end systems support that. And so with YouTube, there's no difference and no uh, like editing work that's extra, no difference for posting between getting one view and a million. 
right? But inside of an e-commerce business, having one customer versus a million is drastically different. So just keep that in mind. And that's something where I, at one point, drastically outpaced a few other things in terms of me putting systems in place and realizing that I needed to put those systems in place because I was too caught up in the growth and you know, managing the financials and bringing on and onboarding a full-time bookkeeper, Gwen, who's been great for the last year and a half, and like having to do all that, you know, getting them access to you know 13 different bank accounts and like 100 different uh, Amex credit cards on different LLCs and like all these different ad accounts. I mean, and like then obviously all the preference of how I like the books done, like for me, not versus the CPA and putting them in touch with that. It's like a whole mess. And there's a thousand different things. And so it was just something where it grew a little too fast and it caused a little problem. Ultimately, it, it affected a lot of other things. But that was a great lesson for growth. Again, that one issue, you know, we can get into the nitty gritty specifics, but it comes down to the supplier ultimately taking advantage of a situation and uh, they thought they could slide one by. And uh, it costed me a lot, a lot of money, both in direct um, money that we had to refund as well as the slight chargebacks that came in, but all the stuff with the ad account going down and like the lost revenue there, but also the damage to the brand a little bit was super unfortunate. So lesson there, number one, always work with someone you can trust, but trust and verify. So again, I'll leave that resource link down below. One of the things you gotta think of, a lot of the, the suppliers that I work with and private suppliers, first of all, they, they don't work with people who start from scratch. The one down below that I'll leave there will just in case you're starting up. But when people are not drop shipping, so a lot of the private suppliers, when you move out of drop shipping and you're ordering inventory, there's only so much warehouse space, right? And when you're signing for a warehouse that you don't own, even if you own it, usually when you're leasing, there's a business lease in place, a commercial lease that's usually three to five years or more. So to some degree, multiple of the people that I work with, like out of Marietta, California, they can't bring on more business. Like I have to be kind of careful scaling with them through that manufacturing warehouse and the the distribution warehouse. And the reason for that is there's only so much cubic footage. And, and to some degree, there's just not enough space. So you have to upgrade to a bigger one and build their business as well. So again, just little factors to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, it was a super great experience. I have a lot of fun as an introvert. I'm a primary introvert. Might not seem like it at times, but most of the time, I just prefer to kind of be chilling. Music and podcasts is my thing, audio books, whatnot, while I work. And like, I enjoy that for me. I like the AC crank, I like it cold. I might throw on a hoodie and just go work for 16 hours. Like that to me is like a very comfortable environment. And just to give you a little perspective, this might be completely unrelated, but I enjoy that so much. And like that has truly become a comfort spot to the point where when like there's arguments in like a relationship or like a problem going on, I resort to that. I just go back to my work in that environment because like that's just where I feel comfortable. So for me, if you're an introvert, I mean, that's something that works really well. I have a lot of fun inside of the e-commerce side of things. If you wanna check out our advertising agency and see how you might be able to work with us, most e-commerce businesses that apply for it ultimately are not a good fit. And it's just because of what we do and how we structure things. It's not some huge $30,000 retainer or whatever. We have like a very specific focus and we only work with a certain type of e-commerce business. So you can find all that link below as well as the access to the supplier, contact information and whatnot. So I hope you enjoyed this video. A little bit of a different style. Let me know if you like it. Make sure to drop a like down below. I've got a new camera on the way. I know this one might be a little fuzzy. I think I dropped it one too many times. But anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to smash a like. I'll do some more documentary type things explaining not only like past successes and failures, but showing you some up-to-date stuff with new stores that are doing really well, both for myself as well as for clients in our agency that we're scaling and building systems for so that they don't have problems like I've had in the past, right? All right, hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to drop a like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram. I answer questions on there every single day, pretty much every single DM. So if you've got a question, a problem, or want to work with me in some way, make sure to go follow me on Instagram. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.